All right, today we're gonna to talk about how to super view and smooth any of your DJI Runcam 5 or any other video footage that's not a GoPro. So the primary issue with any footage that's not GoPro footage is in most cases it won't have super view a capability built in like GoPro does. And secondarily, if you do need to smooth any sections out, it doesn't carry a gyro track like GoPro footage does where you could use something like Real Steady Go or some other avenues. Of course, in my opinion, GoPro is the best. Just the microphone quality and the image quality is just bar none so far from what I have seen. But things like the Runcam 5 are catching up DJI footage, obviously right from the air unit, is really good as well. It's not as good as GoPro quality, but it still uh, saves a lot of weight if you don't need to have the GoPro on there. But with these two downsides of not carrying a gyro track or not having it be natively super viewed, those are two things that would be really nice to overcome with some sort of post-processing. Well, luckily, there's an open source project called Shotcut. So I discovered this on the DJI official Facebook group. So thanks to the people that chimed in and brought Shotcut to my attention. But anyways, you go to shotcut.org and you can see this is an open source platform, so it's not going to turn into something that you have to pay for in the future. And of course, you can contribute and make it better, just like you can Betaflight or any other open source project. There's a GitHub repo, forums, so on and so forth. Before downloading, go ahead, do check out. There's a quick start guide down here. There's video tutorials, and there's lots of videos on YouTube about using Shotcut for different things. But we're gonna go ahead and click download here. And what I ended up doing, you can either choose the portable zip file where you can just unzip it and run it right from a directory, or you can do the installer. So you have two different hosting sites here. You can download it from either one. I actually grabbed the portable installer and just unzipped it and ran it in a directory. You can see I have a folder here called C drive drop local RC configurators and then I just unzip shotcut right to here. I'm going to go down and browse to shotcut exe and go ahead and click and launch that. Once you've launched shotcut you're probably going to want to bring this bottom bar up a little bit. This is where you actually add your tracks in so just slide that up a little bit and up here you're going to pick a location where the project file is going to be stored. So I have that to my drive here where I do all my videos. By default, the video mode is set to automatic, but we wanna change that so that when we bring in our four by three video, it doesn't go to a four by three project. We want it to be a 16 by nine project. So we're gonna hit that drop down, and we're gonna use air unit footage from the DJI. So we're gonna pick the DJI 1080p 60 FPS, because that's what the native sampling rate is at for the DJI air unit. And it's gonna be, of course, the HD 1080p resolution. Go ahead and name your project and hit OK. Next, we're going to go up to Open File. We're going to grab our source file here. And that will start to play. We'll just pause it. Then we're going to hit this drop down button to add this source file, which you can see we're selected on here, into the timeline. That will add the source file down to the timeline, and then you'll see we'll switch to the project tab right here. So the first thing we want to do is super view this. You can see it's in the four by three aspect ratio. We want to take that up to 16 by nine to get rid of these bars. So we're going to go into the filters tab here. And if you don't see the filters tab, 
you go up to view and then make sure filters is turned on and this will add the various ways to manipulate the video we're going to hit the add button here and you can see you should have a favorite save by default of size and position if you don't see that there just type in size up here at the top and that will do a, a search uh, for all the different filters and you can check the favorites for size and position so the favorites are what you see when you click on this button here whichever have the asterisk in front of them and then the video is all the filters so if you click on that and take off this search parameter and you click on video you can see here's all the different filters and the ones with the asterisks are the ones that show up in their favorites here so obviously the intent is to put the asterisks in front of the ones that you use the most you have audio filters here uh, as well so again size and position i'm going to click that that checks that on and you can see it puts us back under the video and now we have this filter that we can apply here we're going to go ahead and hit distort and that's going to stretch the image to be the full 16 by 9 ratio then we're going to add another filter so go back into the filters tab here again hit the plus and again if right here we're going to hit elastic scale as previously mentioned if you don't see elastic scale here just type elastic up at the top or you can go into the videos button here find it put an asterisk in front of it and then click it now we have elastic scaling and then this nonlinear stretch is what we want so we're going to take that anywhere between 65 and 70 is generally where you want to be i find 70 is i think about right and that will scale it up uh, change the stretching so you can see between the center being you know stretched out or you know a one-to-one -one ratio versus the sides so now if i go this way you can see it's the sides are stretched here the center is stretched so about 70 people say and i would agree seems to be about right but anywhere in there you can play with it make it whatever you want it to be at this point if you just wanted the video to be super viewed you can just go ahead and hit export right here but we're going to add in another feature we're going to add in smoothing and take any of the bobbles and shakes out of this footage so just like before we're going to hit the plus button and we're going to find stabilization just like before video or you can just type in stabilization if you don't see it in your favorites already so stabilize and now we have the stabilization settings we need to attend to there's lots of videos on youtube about shot cut and stabilization and different opinions so the one i found that seemed to work pretty well for me is you just take the accuracy and the shakiness and move them all the way up and then anywhere from 20 to 30 seems like a good smoothing value and it seemed to work pretty well obviously the accuracy and the shakiness that's an analytic part so the higher you have that the longer it's going to take to analyze the video which does take some time and then the smoothness the higher you have that the more smooth it is but it's going to zoom in the video more just like real study does and by zooming in it's going to reduce the resolution make it a little bit more blurry because you're zooming in and the pixel ratio is about the same so just like any footage as you zoom in and you keep this and you if you have so many pixels on the screen you zoom into it your sharpness goes down so some people were moving this up and then adding sharpen into it as another filter so you can play with that but i didn't do that it looked to be about the same to me so i just did full shakiness full accuracy and changed this up to smoothing and then from here you just hit analyze now this part does take a while so go get some breakfast get a cup of coffee or whatever you're doing and then come back to it you can see the progress of the analyzation going on over here you can see i'm about five percent you can right click on this anytime hit stop this job ultimately you have to wait for the analyze function to complete before you can go ahead and export the track i've already done that so we're going to go ahead and hit cancel this job i'll show you how to export the track and then we're done okay so once the analysis is complete you can see i did stop it here i'm going to go just hit export here and click our youtube preset here from here some of the advice i saw in the one video it seemed to work pretty well that the quality was about the same and one of the aspects he did is went into advance after picking that preset change the codec to be a constant bit rate and then change this to double pass so it does take the export processing a while as well since it's doing a double pass but that seemed to keep the quality up uh, and he's run through a bunch of uh, different variants of it so I'm going to go ahead and trust in that and I'm not going to spend all the time it, he took but of course you can play with it in different things and see what works best for you from there you just go ahead and hit export file 
it asks you for a location to save it. So I'll go down here, yeah, smooth two. And you can see uh, an option here as well. If you didn't click the analyze button that you could run it all in one thing. So instead of clicking analyze and having come back, maybe you just go right to export. And then when this dialog comes up, it will analyze and export. So you could let it run, you know, during the day while you're doing something else or let it run at night. Thanks everybody. And I hope this helped.